as uh, most of you know, obviously in the, in the audience, this is quite the reform across the board, pretty much cleared the, the regulatory desk and, and now rebuilding um, uh, major reform, major structure. And the existing three directives for medical devices, active implantables and IVDs are now uh, replaced in the regulations with two. So there's an MDR, I'll refer to that as medical device regulation, and IVDR for the in vitro diagnostic regulation. Uh, and a lot of activity, I understand that you folks have a lot of things on your plate as manufacturers. Um, the European Commission had actually put together a little less suggestion list for you to do as if you didn't need something else. But it really does uh, affect everything that you uh, have to in play to bring a medical device to market. Uh, I want to touch on number nine there, this uh, master implementation plan. If you were to actually go to that and read uh, some of the details, uh, it doesn't stop there. They actually give you a number of sub projects to work on. So clinical evaluations, technical documentation, documentations, uh, post-marketing surveillance, vigilance, um, uh, quality management systems and so on, all are um, worthy of, of a whole separate discussion. But today, we're going to focus in on unique device identification, UDI, and the medical device registration. Now, let's go take a, a quick summary at the, the UDI requirements um, regarding um, medical device, uh, MDR compliant devices. So there's a couple major areas. We won't spend a whole lot of time on it, but you should be aware that labeling obviously is a big component of those set of requirements having a unique product identifier on the product and packaging, presenting it uh, in human readable and in a uh, barcode type format typically. Um, a subset of all those medical devices out there qualify as reusable and therefore they need to be directly marked. And today, this is our focus right there, number three, the European Union UBDI database, um, number of uh, attributes that need to be submitted. And then obviously there, there's all the reporting and uh, other types of documentation and procedures and SOPs that need to be put in place. So there's uh, four major tenets of UDI. Um, and we'll take a look now at the supporting database that the European Union is putting in place. This is a, uh, a revamped, revitalized Udimed uh, database. Um, first module there, there's six pillars. The first one is that economic operators, actors, and all those um, um, Individuals that touch base and interact with the Udimed uh, do need to register, and we'll give you some more information about that later. This is the module we're talking about, the second one, the UDI and device registration. Manufacturers are the primary uh, participant in putting data into there, but there is um, interaction with the system procedure pack producers, the um, authorized reps, the importers, and so on. There's a dedicated module for certificates and notified bodies. Clinical investigation, so those sponsors, whether it be a manufacturer or other entity uh, that's involved in clinical investigations, there's um, a dedicated module for, for storing that information and, and uh, collecting it there. Vigilance modules of serious incident reports and, and other uh, trend reports and so on need to be reported. Again, primary the manufacturer. And lastly, market surveillance. So the competent authorities, um, European Commission and so on, uh, taking a look at uh, data that's been received and, and uh, recording that information there. Now, there's one other participant coming down from the top there uh, is the public. So unlike uh, the existing UDMED, uh, access was limited pretty much to member states and, and competent authorities and so on. This new UDMED uh, with the six modules has public access, and that is great news. Uh, so the visibility is there and so on. Now, a couple timeline uh, points that we, milestones that we need to talk about. In the bottom left, we see the date of application uh, delayed one year, now currently at May 2021, uh, just a few weeks away. And then the other date of application for the IVDR is a year later uh, in May 2022. Uh, to current uh, knowledge, a plan is for Udemy to be fully functional and launched on May 26, 2022. Now, since that launch date is after the date of application, the legislation builds in a six month delay. And that starts all the effective um, 
items and, and, and regulations and specifications related to Unimed reporting, one of which is the registration of medical devices. And there's an 18 month window for registration um, that, that goes out uh, to May, 2024. And that is a, an 18 month window that you obviously wanna be aware of. But prior to that, we are seeing and already in place are a couple of those modules that are released early, production versions, and you can make voluntary submissions. So in December of last year, the active module was opened up. Uh, I did a check this morning. It looks like um, 11,119 manufacturers have already been um, registered in there and, and uh, moving forward with SRN uh, assignment and so on. The other two modules, the next two, the device module, and this is the one that we're concerned about today, and certified uh, notified bodies, uh, now scheduled for September of this year, and we're waiting for... Uh, the actual schedule for the, the the last three modules. So keep that in mind as you uh, make plans.